Whenever someone speaks of Italy, you will usually hear them talking about visiting Rome or Venice. But there is another place that has so many great things to do, and yet, somehow people seem to miss it out on their itineraries. Yes, the place we're talking about is Bologna. No matter what kind of person you are, be it a history buff or a foodie or just a person who wants to relax, Bologna has so much to offer. So if you are planning a trip to Italy and have missed out Bologna on your list, this is the time to put it right back in. Worried about the time crunch? Well, we have got a perfect plan for you that will make you take in the Bolognese atmosphere to its. During day one, we are going to discover a world made of centuries old buildings in one of the first ever built Italian cities, breathing the very essence of this old town. On the second day, we will get entertained by the biggest food park in the world and we will have a taste of the very best Italian food, traditional recipes and ingredients. But before we get down to that, make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you love the video, do not forget to press that like button as well. Welcome back to Town Travel Tips. Bologna has a Mediterranean climate, so you know what that means, very harsh summers and cold winters. This goes for most of the other spots in northern Italy as well, so we are convinced that you have to arrange your trip between May and September. After all, that is indeed the tourist season for the country. You can choose to travel via air, but let us tell you, bullet train rides across the countryside are perhaps the best way to add some spice to your journey. A train from Milan will take just about an hour to reach Bologna, and after visiting it, you can take that same train to Florence as well. It is much more comfortable, cheaper, and the scenery is undoubtedly beautiful. Once you reach Bologna, it won't be difficult to find a place to stay. If you do want to cover most of the famous spots in the city, you should try to arrange for a room somewhere around the two major squares or Via del Independenza. Since you will be planning to visit during some of the busiest months in the year, it would be a good decision to book a place well in advance. Once you have settled in, it is now time to explore the medieval city. Start your day from the city center and admire the typical Italian squares, or as they are locally known, the piazzas, not pizzas, mind you. Head to Piazza Maggiore and take a moment to look around. It will just give you an idea of the gorgeous Renaissance-style architecture and the local Bolognese life you will be experiencing in the next few hours. It is also the place from where you can start visiting most of the sightseeing spots. This main square is surrounded by interesting architecture, such as the Basilica di San Petronio, and the Fontana del Nettuno. If you explore around a bit more, you will also notice many medieval palaces standing tall. It is now time to bring in all that energy because the next thing on the list is to climb the Torre Asinelli. It is an inevitable part of the Bolognese touring experience and these towers stand straight right in the heart of the city. Once you do manage to climb the 498 steps to the top, you will be blessed with a marvelous view of the city's terracotta rooftops, grand squares, cobbled streets, and the hills all around in the countryside. We are sure that after all this, you will be really tired and we don't really blame you. And hey, it is now lunchtime and food is perhaps one of the biggest reasons people visit the place. Did you know that Bologna is known as Italy's food capital? In fact, it is called La Dota e la Grassa, which has a twofold meaning. Dota stands for the most ancient universities in the world, while Grassa implies fat, thanks to the delicious food. Some of these things that you have to try are pasta alla bolognese, tortellini, tagliatelle, and other Italian staples. If you are a vegetarian, Bologna is still the place to be. Just so you know, Italy's best vegan restaurant is right here in Bologna which means you can miss out on the traditional meat and still enjoy some delicious food. If you are unsure of where to sit for your lunch, some of the options we would like you to try are the Vicolo Colombina and the Trattoria Via Sera. And oh, how could we forget the Osteria Bottega? This unique and historic restaurant is so easy to miss as it is just hidden in an alley. But once you do manage to find the place, trust us when we say that this is the perfect place for an Italian-style lunch. If you want something lighter, aperitivo in Bologna is usually made with mortadella, salami and ham products. But all of these places are quite well known, no matter how hard they are to find, so do make your reservations well in advance. After experiencing the food that this place has to offer, it is again time for some exploring. This time you should be wandering around the Piazza Santo Stefano and drinking real Italian espresso coffee in the square. Visit the seven medieval churches, perfectly kept through the centuries. For dinner, you will find plenty of places near the major squares, but if you are a first-time tourist to Italy, do steer clear of the tourist traps. Experienced tourists will know what we're talking about. If a restaurant has flashy pictures on their menu outside the place or waiters trying to drag you in, you should wave that place goodbye. 
After your dinner, you may choose to head back for a nice long sleep, or you can just look at the beautiful night sky and the pretty lights across the squares. After all, you will be here for just another 24 hours. As we did say before, Bologna is all about two things, history and food. Since we spent the first day just turning the pages of history, day two will be all about, you guess it right, food. And imagine this, spending your morning not in a restaurant but an actual food park. All you need to do is book well in advance and you will have a shuttle service that departs from the Bologna train station and drops you in just 20 minutes right at your first destination of the morning, which is FICO. This Italian food theme park will give an experience of the Italian cuisine right down to its roots. You can sample the food, meet local producers, see how the food is actually made, roam around and sit in the restaurant and eateries where it is needless to say, all the food is made from the best Italian ingredients. What is even better is that you can buy these ingredients from pop-up stores, which means you can enjoy authentic Italian pasta even in the comfort of your home. Just some of the things that you can buy are salumi and fromaggi, truffles, caviar, a whole range of Italian fresh and dry pastas, and even olive oil sourced directly from the farms across the countryside. If you have friends who are crazy about food back home, make sure to pick up a gift box for them as well. Going around and enjoying FICO will take you an entire morning. From there, you should head to the Finestrella di Via Piella, which will give you the vibes of Venice. It is quite close to the Il Quadrilatero, which basically means a crossover of four streets. Such quadrilaterals are quite famous across all of Italy, and they are usually crowded thanks to the uncountable shops and eateries around. If you didn't manage to pick up gift boxes from FICO, you can get souvenirs here, such as a mortadella bologna. For the last few hours in this beautiful city, you should be again delving into a delicious dinner to remember the city by. Bologna is known for its vibrant nightlife, so check out some wine places like Inoteca Italiana, Medulla, Oitre, and Il Polacchio, which are all scattered across the lively square of the city. Get some tapas to go with it. Pubs in Bologna are warm places to go to as you will find crowds of locals, students, and visitors just mingling and sharing their stories with drinks in their hands. If you are not much of a drinker, you will have plenty of options for cozy, classic, traditional eateries. Try out the divine lasagna dishes or the tortellini al brodo if you haven't already. Just remember that you are here to unwind and blend into the Bolognese experience. As we said earlier, although Bologna isn't in the to-go-to list of many people, its beautiful architecture and the food culture is something that a lot of us would regret missing out on. It might not be a big city, but it does have a significant student population, which means there is always some event going on to which you can dance or sing along to, just like any other local. That is what Bologna is about, just blending in and experiencing Italian culture from the roots. So. Did we convince you to spend your weekend at Bologna? Or have you already been to Bologna? What was the best thing that you did there? Do let us know in the comments section below, because we love hearing from you. We will be back very soon. Ciao!